In this video, we're gonna learn about dot products. And you might have seen dot products in your multivariable calculus class, which would have been up to this point here. Because in multivariable calculus, you only do vectors in two or three dimensions, but here what we want to do in linear algebra is extend it to the nth dimension. So we've added on this little bit here. And this is the definition for if we've got two vectors like that. And we want to find the dot product. And for dot product we put a dot. Okay. A dot over here. And Geometrically it means that a dot b is equal to length a length b times cosine of theta. And this means length and the length of a is equal to the square root of this. For the components. Now also for Yes, we have some angle properties. So A dot B greater than zero means we've got an angle less than 90 degrees. If A dot B is less than zero, that's an angle more than 90 degrees. And if it's equal to zero, that's 90 degrees, which means the orthogonal or perpendicular. Whichever you want to call it. Now, I've got some examples here to show you how this works out, how we'll do it. So, we want to find the dot product of these different things. So, these are A1, this is A1, B1, B2, B, A2, B2 and A3, B3. So, what we'll do is, it's equal, the dot product's going to be equal to and then we can simplify this a bit and that's going to be 12 minus 10 minus 1 which is 1. So a dot product for this one here is equal to 1. That's the dot product for that one. Next one. And we're just multiplying these things here, which is pretty easy. And you know that this is going to come out to be 20 when we add them up. So what our product for that one is 20. And to say I've just done the components, these two, these two, these two, and these two, multiplied and summoned, exactly like the rule says. And because there was four components for this one, I went up to A4, B4. Now this one, no matter which order these are in, say for example, A was in a different order, Let's say someone gave you A to B, I don't know, something like 2J minus 4K plus 3I. You still do them the same way, 
you need to do the I's, the J's and the K's. Otherwise you're going to end up getting the wrong answer. Probably. No alone some situations by coincidence you might still get the right answer. But don't take the risk. Get three, four, because these are our eyes here. <coughs> we'll get the G ones, which is two and minus one. And I've got a minus four and a five here. So then when we multiply, we get 12 minus two, minus 20, which is going to be 12 minus 22, which is going to be, let's see, 12 minus 20 is going to be 12 minus 10 is going to be, would be 2, and if you take another 10 from that you get minus 12. And if you take another 2 we get minus 14, so that's going to be minus 14. OK. So what our product for the last one is minus 14. <coughs> and I hope that little sum at the end there was actually right. By the way, there's one more little application I want to tell you about with dot products, which is finding angles. Now notice this here, this formula where, I tell it, where I've told you what it means geometrically. Notice how we can rearrange this formula to get a cosine theta the subject. And you should already know how to do that. We'll divide by this thing here. So we'll get a dot b divided by the length of a and b. And that's going to be the cosine of theta. And you know that if you've got the cosine of theta to find the angle, you do the inverse cosine of theta. You know that from your trigonometry classes that you've done. So that is how we do dot products, which is use this rule up here. And there'll be a few interesting properties that would probably be listed in your book. Or I could do a video of proving some of them at some point and post it as a video response to this. Which I'll probably do because I like um, giving the proofs to these things for people who are interested. <coughs>